A number of suture patterns have been described for use in animals in various organ systems and surgical situations. The fundamental technique and knowledge of suture pattern placement is critical to the success of any surgery. Understanding the suture pattern's tendency to oppose, evert, invert, or tension relieve helps the student rationally choose a pattern best suited for a given surgical problem. This tape will cover techniques only. The student is encouraged to review in current surgery textbooks the specific suture patterns and their indications. After viewing this tape, you will be able to describe nine listed suture patterns and classify them as to whether they are simple, interrupted, or continuous, and each suture pattern's tendency to oppose, evert, invert, or tension relieve. Mayo Hagar needle holders and Brown Adson thumb forceps are required for practically all suture pattern placements. Sharp, sharp scissors are used for knot cutting. As in this tape, cloth or foam material may be used as a practice substance. Suture patterns may be first described as either continuous or interrupted. Continuous patterns run from a point of origin to some distant endpoint, incorporating numerous bites in the tissue. Interrupted patterns are tied and cut after one or two passages through the tissue. Additionally, suture patterns may be classified as first appositional, bringing individual tissue planes into anatomic alignment. Second, inverting, turning tissue inward toward the patient or toward the lumen of a viscous. Third, everting, turning tissue edges outward toward the surgeon. Or fourth, tension relieving. In this model, a non-tension relieving suture gaps when pressure is placed on the tissue. In this model, note how the addition of a tension relieving suture has removed the tension forces from the wound. The first suture pattern to be demonstrated is the simple interrupted. It is an appositional suture pattern. The simple interrupted suture is made by introducing the needle through the tissue approximately five millimeters lateral to the incision. The suture is inserted through the tissue on one side and passed through the opposite side perpendicular to the incision taking the same amount of tissue in a single bite and then tied. In this illustration you see the finished simple interrupted suture. The second suture pattern is the interrupted cruciate. This is an appositional and tension relieving suture pattern. The interrupted cruciate is applied as if it were two simple interrupted sutures joined together. The needle is introduced on one side five millimeters from the incision and is passed to the corresponding point on the opposite side. The needle is then advanced approximately five to seven millimeters and is passed across the incision line without entering the tissues. A second passage is made through the tissue parallel to the first passage. The suture origin on one side is tied to the contralateral end above the tissue surface. 
This illustration shows a completed interrupted cruciate suture. The third pattern to be demonstrated is the simple continuous suture. This is an appositional suture pattern. The simple continuous suture is made by first creating a simple interrupted suture and knotting. Only the short or non-needle end is cut short. The needle is advanced and introduced through the tissue perpendicular to the incision line. No tying is done. As the suture is again advanced and reintroduced in the same way as the previous sutures. At the end of the incision, the suture is knotted securely. This illustration shows a completed simple continuous suture. The fourth pattern to be demonstrated is the Ford interlocking pattern. This is an appositional suture pattern. The Ford interlocking suture is a modification of the simple continuous suture. The beginning of the suture is as described for the simple continuous suture. The needle is advanced, a loop is formed, and the needle is passed perpendicularly through the tissues in the same direction. After the needle is passed from the tissues, it is drawn through the preformed loop and tightened. The pattern is repeated for the length of the incision. This illustration shows a completed forward interlocking suture. The sixth pattern to be demonstrated is the Lambert pattern. This is an inverting suture pattern. The Lambert is made by directing the needle perpendicular to the incision from the outside of the lumen of a hollow viscous, passing through the serosa and muscularis only, and returning through the serosa on the same side of the incision. The needle is then passed across the incision to the opposite side and is introduced through the serosa and muscularis adjacent to the incision. It is passed out the serosal surface perpendicular to the incision line and advanced in an identical continuous manner. If the suture is pulled tautly, the pattern will invert. This illustration shows a completed and tightened Lambert suture pattern. The seventh pattern to be demonstrated is the Cushing suture pattern. This is an inverting suture. The Cushing suture is begun with a single Lambert suture. From the suture's point of exit, the needle is then advanced parallel to the incision and introduced into the serosa passing through the muscularis only for 5 millimeters and exiting the serosa on the same side of the incision. The needle is then passed across the incision under the skin and introduced at a point that corresponds to the exit point of the contralateral side. This stitch is placed so that the suture crosses the incision perpendicularly. The pattern is continued and knotted at the end of the incision. 
This illustration shows a completed Cushing suture pattern. The seventh pattern to be demonstrated is the Connell suture pattern. This is an inverting suture pattern. The Connell pattern differs from the Cushing's in that the suture penetrates all layers of the wall into the lumen with each needle bite. This illustration shows a completed Connell suture pattern. The eighth pattern to be demonstrated is the interrupted vertical mattress suture. This is an everting and tension relieving suture pattern. The vertical mattress suture is introduced 8 to 10 millimeters from the incision on one side, passed across the incision line, and made to exit an equal distance on the opposite side of the incision. The needle is then reversed and returned perpendicular to the incision line to the opposite side by passing four millimeters from the incision on both sides. The knot is tied on the side of origin. This illustration shows a completed interrupted vertical mattress suture. The ninth and last pattern to be demonstrated is the interrupted horizontal mattress suture. This pattern can be appositional, everting, or tension relieving depending upon how it is tied. The interrupted horizontal mattress stitch is made by introducing the needle 5 millimeters on the side opposite the surgeon, crossing the incision line, and exiting on the near side as a mirror image. The needle is reversed and advanced 8 to 10 millimeters, and then introduced in the near side crossing the incision line to the opposite side, parallel to the first tissue bite. The suture is tied according to the function required of the suture pattern, tight for everting or loose for appositional. This illustration shows a completed interrupted horizontal mattress suture.